All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Connecting the Pack. Today, I am joined by Uzma Miraj. Um, Uzma is a student here at NC State University, and she's currently pursuing a, um, a master's in cl climate change and society. Uh, she's a student from Pakistan who recently started her journey here at NC State University. And today we're going to try to talk about um, a little bit uh, we're, we're going to try to tackle uh, her educational journey back in Pakistan and talk a little bit more about uh, her uh, current involvement with NC State University. So without further ado, uh, Uzma, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Thank you for m having me here. Absolutely. So um, before we talk about this interesting program that you're a <laughs> part of right now, I would be um, interested to know more about um, the your educational journey back home in Pakistan, which I'm sure was quite different from uh, what you're currently pursuing. So um, maybe you can walk us through um, your 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 you know your uh, your involvement in academia or in the academic world back in Pakistan, uh, and and what sort of program you were involved in before you started here at NC State? Yeah, sure. So my academic background is very different and unique for me and for other people as well. Hmm. I am from a small village in Pakistan that is called Pasu. My village name is Pasu. Pasu. Yeah, and it is in the northern part of Pakistan. And the province, which is not considered province yet, <laughs> is called... <laughs> Gilgit Baltistan. <laughs> okay. And I'm there is a small village there, so I am basically from there. And uh we usually have like small villages and we are like very closely involved with our family in the fields. We work in the fields. We like um yeah, we cultivate get our own food like vegetables and all that and we have like cows <laughs> Wow! <laughs> yeah we have like domestic animals in our home so yeah so I did my schooling from my village till grade 8 then I moved to the city which is called Gilgit 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 okay uh, <laughs> yes and then I did my like my higher secondary study from there like from my uh, till my college like mm -hmm. my FSC from there. Then I moved to the big cities wow. <laughs> of Pakistan <laughs> for my bachelor's degree, for my four years degree, yeah. Wow, so you started out in a very small village where you guys grow your own food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and have cows and yeah. And then you gradually, you you're transitioning into sort of a bigger environment, a bigger city, and you're in a different, maybe, culture in a way? Yes, Would you sure. consider it yeah, different? Culture as well as language. I mean, not language. We have, like, national language, but mostly cultural. Oh. Yeah. So what would you say is something that is very significantly different uh, when it comes to the culture in the, in the city that you moved into compared to how things were your in your village uh, something that stands out maybe. yeah there's a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> different the people are very different for, like in the city yeah. comparative to the village the village people are very simple and <laughs> <laughs> but when you move to the cities you you like interact with different different people uh -huh. from different cultural background so yeah and yeah, and the thoughts, the behaviors. I mean, everything is different. As your <laughs> culture is different. So I think, yeah. Wow. It's kind of tough from moving from a village to a city mm -hmm. and, yeah, interacting with people who are from different background. And, yeah. It's hard to make maybe connections in, in such environments, or was it, do you think, easier now that you were in the city <laughs> uh 
yeah from the beginning it was very uh, very different for me like interacting with people from different regions and um i don't know how to explain it like a maybe the uh, i guess their upbringing had played a role in sort of you know determining how they behave currently yeah. because they've always lived in a city so they find it hard to deal with village people no that's not a thing mm. but due to cultural difference yeah there are differences in thoughts oh, or maybe wow. yeah and also yeah huh. i think that's <laughs> wow and, and that would be what's the name of that city again that you were in uh, that's raul pindi and raul pindi. Okay. it's in, it's in the province of punjab so we have like provinces in pakistan uh-huh yeah wow and you spent um you spent your university years there yeah or? i spent my university year there and it was my first time moving to a big city and living alone from <laughs> like far from my family from my mother from my father gosh so that must have been maybe hard not just for you but for them to let you go into like a big city and to move out and to spend your college years. Yeah, our parents are, I think, used to of that because we have no choice, but we have to move from our family, from our hometown, because for our ed- education, they are very supportive mm-hmm. regarding our education. Wow. So, yeah, uh, I think it's now not hard for them to, to send their children far away from them, yeah. Oh, that is very nice, actually, to have, I guess, parents that are maybe accustomed to the idea of letting their child pursue education yeah. outside and to kind of become more independent. Yeah. So that would, um, so you would spend four years or there, or would you maybe in the summer visit? Yeah, or they I would used visit to visit. You? I used to visit in the summer as well as. In the winter, uh-huh. we used to have winter breaks as well. And for the summer, we used to have three months breaks. Oh, so wow. it was a lot. I <laughs> mean, yeah. And uh, we used to have the breaks from the start of June. And it goes until uh, 15th of August. Yeah. Yeah. And at that time, there the temperature used to be very hot in the cities. So Gosh. it was good to go to the... <laughs> village <laughs> so yeah wow <laughs> so that time was the best that time used to be the best time for me because the the weather in the village used to be very cool and very very yeah yeah chilly <laughs> <laughs> so you you spent uh four years uh kind of living um on your own without maybe the presence of your family um w- 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 do you think i mean that was um that led to tremendous growth or maybe it kind of shaped the person that you are today i mean how how would you d- d- describe that yeah i i have i've seen a lot of transition in myself i mean that was not just a four year i i think that was there was eight year oh. eight years i yeah, I lived without my family, but I used to visit them during the summers or like, yeah, in the winters, but I used to live alone a lot because I had to move to the city for my studies and then for my bachelor's, I had to move to the big city. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I, uh, there was a lot of growth. I've seen a lot of like difference in myself. I, uh, I was observing like, I was growing during because I was learning things and I was interacting with people and I think yeah I was seeing changes in myself. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And you said for 8 years does that mean that even in your high school years you had to move out? Yes. Wow. So that's very um I think I, I don't know if that many people experience such a thing like a a lot of people would first experience being independent when they move it you know when they when they start 
their college years, but I think you've experienced it at an early age, you know, in your high school years. Yeah, it's very common for people from my region. Because everyone moves to the cities and they leave their parents behind. They leave their hometown and they they visit their family in the summers or in the winters. So that would mean you guys would be staying, w- would you consider it a boarding school? Like you, you guys you have like dorms and... Yeah, we used to live, I used to live in a dorm. I mean, we call it hostels. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but here they call it dorms, yeah. Wow. So that, uh, during those years, in your high school years, is that when you discovered your passion for, uh, you know, uh, climate change or, or the, you know, environmental science? Or when did you first discover that that's something you, you liked? Uh, uh, when I did my second year of education, like the FSC, uh, my brother suggested me, because there's a not of a lot of career counseling in our pod. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, my brother suggested me to go to this field <laughs> <laughs> because that was different. And I had my second year in pre-medical. I mean, that was a, I had a science background, so um, we decided to go to a science, doing something science. And <laughs> okay. I'd also th- thought about it that I think that is a good idea because I'm from a mountainous region uh, where there is a lot of glaciers, and I can I can do some kind of work for my region, for my community in the future. Mm-hmm. And from there, I decided to do my do my bachelor's in environmental sciences. Mm-hmm. And I've done my bachelor's from a woman university, Fatma Jinnah Women University in okay. Pakistan. And yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. So that was, oh, when you said Fatma Jinnah Women University. Fatma Jinnah. Oh, Fatma Jinnah Women University. Would that be considered um, like a women's college, similar to some of the colleges, women's yeah. colleges here in the yeah. U.S.? Wow. So, and you... You pursued environmental science there, um, and I mean, during that time in college, was that your first exposure to environmental science, or did you have a little bit of a background? I mean, you had a scientific background, but maybe not specifically when it comes to environment. Yeah, it was my first first time studying environmental sciences, but we used to have a, a one chapter of like <laughs> environment in okay. our science books but but not specifically a major book for the environmental science so yeah it was my first time oh studying wow. that wow and for people like myself who are not very um, aware of what you guys would probably study in environmental science what is something major that you guys look into or perhaps you've explored uh extensively throughout your four years of uh, pursuing environmental science? Mm, For the environmental science, I majorly worked on uh, water quality. Water quality? Yeah. Oh. I I looked into the drinking water quality in my region. I did a field visit there, and I collected samples, and I tested those samples, whether they are... They are... um, clean enough for drinking purpose or not uh-huh. yeah so i majorly worked on water and i collected water samples from glaciers streams and even spring water because people in my region are di- directly consume the spring water uh-huh. and yeah my major focus was on studying that wow. in the field so you've done, maybe, would it be so? Would I can I say a lot of field work in in, in terms of water quality testing? That was just for my thesis work in my uh-huh. final year, but before that, in my four years, I studied about like hydrology, environmental management, mm-hmm. environmental policies, and what kind of laws are there for the environment in specifically in Pakistan. 
and how are they implemented and about the environmental impact assessments where we study about like if there is some kind of development how is that going to impact the environment so yeah there is uh before developing something like before doing some kind of construction mm -hmm. there is a kind of assessment environmental assessment uh, which is submitted to the developers who are going to construct something or doing some kind of work yeah. but how they can how that project can impact the environment and whether the people should develop construct something or not in a place wow which which part of your maybe field work or practical work did you enjoy the most was it the water quality testing part or this this particular um route that you just <laughs> just highlighted yeah i have did a lot of work uh after my bachelor's degree i did a um, internship mm -hmm. with uh, a government organization which is which is called forest welfare and why wildlife and environment department and there i worked on tree plantation activities wow. uh, yeah it was a project called the 10 billion tree tsunami where uh, like we were supposed to motivate people to plant more and more trees in their okay. areas uh, because trees are very important and uh, it's a kind of mitigation process where like yeah you would encourage them to kind of yeah plant we trees. we encourage people to plant more and more trees and even the organization donated trees to the people <laughs> to plant them and yeah to take care of them and i used to go to the fields i used to inspect like i used to count how many trees are <laughs> <laughs> like have you survived would count one two three. yeah how many have <laughs> survived and how many not and wow i used to report that to my supervisor <laughs> <laughs> and i also worked with women empowerment like i mean yeah motivating women to get more involved in tree plantation activities. Wow. So that so I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. And that was done for how long? How long did you do this for? I uh that was a 6 months uh project. Yeah, I was uh, selected for a 6 month after that the project ended and yeah. <laughs> I was hoping to that that will be expand expand like extend for a longer time period but uh -huh. Yeah, it did not. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sure you really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Wow, that was uh, that would probably be after you graduated. Then you yes. said, okay, so you pursued that for a while, and then when did you s start your education here at NC State, and why did you transition? Yeah, I I came here in August 2023. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I was selected on a project. Uh, this uh, is a master's in research. And this is a one-year program. I'm doing a one-year program in climate change and society. Yeah. At the Department of Marine, Earth, and Atmospheric Science Department. And mm, uh, North Carolina has a collaborative project with the female women I mean, women universities in Pakistan. Okay. So they have, like, uh, their purpose is to train women from Pakistan in the environmental field. Mm. So that is why this master's program has been initiated. And this is funded by the State Department. Oh. Yeah. Wow. That's a yeah. prestigious <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I applied through my previous university for mm -hmm. this program and I got selected for it yeah wow and this is your experience here at NC State w would you say that was the first experience abroad or did you have no this this is the first experience wow yeah. so you've never left at, at Pakistan before. no this is my first time <laughs> gosh this is this is really fascinating I mean what was that like I mean when you 
got in like you received the letter and you know you, you left yeah and... <laughs> i was i was very happy at that time because i wanted to i wanted to do my study abroad mm-hmm. and that was a great opportunity for me i mean i was very glad and i did not i was graduated in pakistan i did my bachelor's i completed it in 2020 but i did not pursue my further education in my master's because I was waiting for, yeah, I was I was trying to apply international international universities. So uh-huh. my family used to tell me that, why well, how long will you wait? Like my mother's paid for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, are you? I mean, when will you go? Like, and I was like, I will go one day. Don't worry. <laughs> 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 and yeah, I got it. And when I shared that with my mother, she was very proud. <laughs> wow, I'm I'm uh, sure she was. I mean, that, yeah, and it, she told me that you used to tell me that you will go on there, and you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! This is great. Yeah, that was a great moment for me. And wow, yeah. and and you left in uh, August 2023. Yeah, so that. So that was, you said, your first journey outside of Pakistan. Yes. So first time on a plane, (laughs) first time. (laughs) No, it was not first time on a plane. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) Okay. I thought that was, uh, well, first time outside of Pakistan. Yeah, outside of Pakistan. (laughs) (laughs) So how how were you feeling at that time? I mean, it must have been just, you know. When I was coming, I was very tense <laughs> because <laughs> I was leaving my country and I was going very far <laughs> yeah. when I was thinking about that I was very tense like oh my god <laughs> that's very far now I, I cannot go to my home time <laughs> <laughs> on summers <laughs> that was some kind of very tense but I was cleared from inside that yeah I'm going what I want to do. I'm doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> and in I America. Will do it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is, no, it must have been really, wow. I mean, did, did you, did you, you know, take pictures? <laughs> did you write in a journal? <laughs> what was your approach to try to document I'm, I, that? I'm taking pictures. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not so used to writing journals. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Yeah, I took pictures, and I think that will be a great memory for me. Yeah. Taking pictures. Yeah. yeah. And so this is, I'm sure, just a very different, I guess, culture and different people and everything. Just so different. Everything is so different. <laughs> Even, everything, like, we have, um, I mean, I was not very shocked because I, I, already made my mind that I am going to experience all these things so mm-hmm. I will not be shocked <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good approach <laughs> so, so y- I will assume that it's normal I mean <laughs> everything is normal here I mean we have so much different we are so different in culture like our dressing code mm-hmm. our food oh yeah yeah <laughs> especially our dressing code is very different yeah I mean these dressing codes are not normal for us in <laughs> Pakistan. <laughs> oh, I would imagine they're very different. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was something different for me, and yeah, mm, the food is also different. But I usually cook by myself at my apartment, so yeah, that's not a problem for me. <laughs> no, it's very good because I'm yeah. sure you would know even how to cook your own. Like the food that you like, yeah. the, you know, food yeah, from Pakistan. Yeah, I think of that. So <laughs> I'm used to all that. I used to do all my things by myself, so there's no problem. <laughs> that's that's really interesting that you would say that. You know, it's it's a you would you would never call something abnormal. You would just consider it normal because that's the way things are. Yeah, but, we can. Yeah. I mean, that is that is life. That is world. That is called world. <laughs> <laughs> right. Full of diversity. Yeah. And uh, I mean, when did you start learning? I mean, you, you, you're you now using, obviously, English on a daily basis. But back home, I'm sure you, you didn't. And, and I'm wondering, when did you start learning English? 
uh we i started from my childhood we used to have english medium education uh uh-huh. so yeah but we we usually don't like focus a lot on speaking english <laughs> <laughs> right because we we have like i i speak three now i speak three different languages oh first is my native language and then my national language which is called urdu urdu yeah and then this english language <laughs> i can try i try to speak <laughs> well <laughs> no you speak well <laughs> so yeah we, i usually don't speak in english in my country or in my region we have at home we used to speak in our native language and yeah when i went to the university for my college and university i used to speak in urdu wow and sometimes english yeah very rare that is <laughs> Fascinating. No, really. And you you said you are doing this for a year, so you must be you must be like working so hard to make this experience memorable and, you know, meaningful in a way. Yeah. I'm trying to enjoy everything like whatever I am learning in class or interacting with people. Mhm. Yeah, I want to make everything memorable and uh I have no time for traveling so <laughs> Oh gosh like yeah. you can't like you didn't have an opportunity to sort of explore the US a little yeah. bit Yeah <laughs> I went to DC in the winter break That's amazing Yeah uh but I I want to I want to explore more but I have no time for that mm. I have a lot of course load yeah. I took five courses in my uh fall and now i'm taking five courses <laughs> gosh uh, like a graduate <laughs> level <laughs> yeah whoa because uh this program is for one year so i have to complete like 30 credit hours so yeah 30 credit hours in one year yeah. <laughs> wow that's the probably the equivalent of <laughs> maybe 60 credits in undergraduate level <laughs> courses gosh that's So you have um until May yeah, to finish. Yeah, I will be graduating in May. Wow. Are you how are you feeling about it? Are you excited? Are you um what's how? I am um, I don't know how am I feeling. I have to go back to Pakistan because I have no choice, but I'm planning to do my PhD. Oh, wow. Here because I want to live here. I want to learn more. here so yeah i am planning to do my phd well i really hope that plan works and you get to you know study spend more years here in the states and do you, yeah do you think you're going to do it here at nc state or maybe somewhere else yeah i'm right now i'm planning at the nc state but if i'll not get it i will then try another universities yeah well i'm sure you're going to do a wonderful job. I mean, this is the you know the, the, the path that you, you have chosen and these different transitions that you experienced. This is just a uh, just marvelous, really. I mean, this is incredible. Like I, I never yeah, I mean, I don't know if you see it the same way I see it, but for someone like you who came from a very small town from a you know small village and now doing a masters here at NC State, that's that's a huge deal coming from a different part of the world. Yeah. I mean, that's that's incredible. Do you ever, you know, you ever think about it or you're just too busy studying that you don't really <laughs> think about it? No, I think about it and I when I think about it, I feel very confident and very proud of myself, I'd say, because mm. yeah, it's very hard for a girl from Pakistan to to do all this yeah. and yeah. Yeah. But I did it. And that's incredible. Now I'm sure you're a role model to many of uh I guess the, your peers in, in in Pakistan and an inspiration to them. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was yeah, I'm glad we had this conversation and I'm glad we got to know a little bit more about, you know, your life back then and your life right now. This this is it's an incredible transition and I'm 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 glad you you gave us the opportunity to um you know, to learn more about that from you. So thank you thank you for thank you. showing up. Thank here. you for having. Thank you. Absolutely.